Hi, and welcome to another video on UiPath with me, Jeppe. In this one, we're taking a look at event-driven attended automations. But before we get started, don't forget to click the little watermark down in the right-hand corner so you subscribe to my channel, and also you can hit the notification bell. And at the end of the video, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. But let's get to it. Okay, so we're inside Studio, and for the first time in my video series, we're going to talk specifically about attended automations. And even more specifically, we're talking about event-driven attended automations. So if we look up here in the uh, uh, menu bar up here, we have this button called User Events, and below that we have five different options. User Events are events that are triggered by something the user does. So we have these different options. We have an on-click element, an on-key press element, an on-click image event, a monitor mouse and monitor keyboard event. And what that means is you have different options of reacting to different things that the user might do. So let's uh, start with a very simple one, the, the monitor keyboard event. If I click this option, it'll ask me what is the key combination that I want to react to. So let's say I want to react to Control, Windows key and I. And if I click OK now, what it sets up is this sequence with what's called a trigger scope inside of it. And inside that trigger scope, you have two sections. You have the trigger section and then the action section. And what you can probably figure out is that the trigger section is the thing you react to, and that's a hotkey trigger. That could also be a mouse trigger or another type of trigger. And then, of course, in the actions, you have what happens when this trigger fires. And as a side note, we have this event info trigger arguments. And that variable can give you some information about what was the cause of the trigger being fired and what element did it come from and things like that. So right now we know that it's a hotkey trigger. It fires when we press Control, Windows, Key and I. So what we want to do is we want to just show a message box. And we'll just say, hello world. So if I start this uh, automation now, what happens is, you can see over here in my assistant, is now I have a running job called Say Hello, and that is the name of my project. And if I minimize my uh, studio now and do whatever, and I press uh, Control, Windows key, and I, we get this uh, message box that says Hello. And that is regardless of what happens. When I click OK, the process is still running up here. It's just waiting for me to do something. Specifically, it's waiting for me to type in Control, Windows key, and I. And when I do that, it just keeps reacting to what I'm doing. So let's go back into the project. We'll stop the project. And now we'll actually publish it to my orchestrated tenant. So we'll, uh, this is the package name is say hello. And we will just make sure that we are publishing to my tenant. And the publishing went well. And we'll click OK. We'll jump into my orchestrator, go to the tenant level, see what packages we have. We have a say hello package that's only a few seconds old. If we go into the default folder, into our processes, we can see we don't have any processes yet. And if we decide to add a process, we can select the package we just installed, the say hello package, and we'll give it a display name of say hello world. The environment is already selected, and we can just go down here and we can say um, create to this process. As soon as that happens, if we resize this, we can see over here in my assistant that within a few seconds we should get a new process over here. Maybe we'll click refresh. And now we have the say hello world process awaiting install. If I run this, it'll just go to the running state. So now we have a process and we can take our project here and we can close studio altogether. And we still have this process running. And if I minimize everything else and just start hitting Control, Windows, Key, I, we get the Hello World message box. So now we have a process that's just listening for me to press Control, Windows, Key, and I, and then it will show me this message box. I admit this is not the most useful process in the world, but it's a process and it's just waiting for me to do whatever it needs me to do for it to react. Right. So before we move on to a slightly more advanced example, I just want to do a couple of things. First thing is that I want to create a shortcut to my downloads folder here on my desktop. And then we'll open our assistant and we'll open a new project in Studio. And I've called this project Unpack Fault Screenshots. And the reason for that is that if we look in Orchestrator, 
in my default folder where I have this say hello world automation. I earlier had another automation called the failing shopper. And funny enough, that job kept failing. So if we look in the jobs page, we can see this, the failing shopper job failing. And if we click over here on the three dots, we can download a recording of that failing job. And if you're not familiar with the feature where you can record a sequence of screenshots when you have something fail, uh, then I'll give you a link at the end of this video to a video that I made where you can uh, use that feature. So this will basically download a file containing a bunch of screenshots. And I want to react to that. So what I like to do is when the user goes into this page to download these screenshots, the screenshots are contained in a zip file. And I want to unzip that zip file into a failing jobs folder that I have here on my desktop. And for now, that folder is empty. So if I move into Studio, into my new project here, what I want to do is I want to go to the user events menu and select the on click element. And that's going to prompt me to select an element that I want the automation to react to. And that is an element that is sort of hidden behind this little submenu over here. So I'll use the F2 delay feature to delay the selection. I can click the element and then I'll wait for the timeout to occur. And then I can click the download recording. That will create a selector for the download recording element inside my page, inside the triggers element of the trigger scope. And the trigger scope, I'll just change the name to mouse click just so we can keep track of what where we are now inside the mouse click trigger scope as i said earlier we have a trigger section and an action section and inside the action section that is where we want stuff to happen and what we want to happen now is just a little bit different because we want to wait for the file to be completely downloaded before we try to unzip it and the way we can do that is by using another trigger scope with a file change trigger inside of it so We'll go here and we'll type in scope and I can drag a trigger scope into my actions here and then inside the trigger for this inner trigger scope and we'll call this wait for file download. We will insert a file change trigger. So I'll drag that in and the path is the path to my downloads folder up here. So I'll just paste that in. And the file name filter, well, I want to check that the file name contains screen capture somewhere in the file name. So now anytime that I click the download recording element inside my orchestrator, it's going to react to that and then listen inside of my downloads folder for a new file with the text screen capture as part of its name. And when it detects that, it's going to do something. And what it's going to do, it's going to, and I'll just paste a little bit in here, and what I just pasted in is an extract or unzipped files activity. And that's going to look into my downloads folder. And it's going to look at this args.filechangeinfo.name property. And the args object that we're looking at here is this file change trigger argument that we get here. And inside of that object is a bunch of information. And one of them is the name of the file that is was just changed. So now that we know that the file was just changed, I just want to unzip it into my failed jobs destination folder. And the reason why it's complaining uh, with all these errors is that this object here, image folder, has not been created. And that is simply a directory info object. If we look in the variables pane, we can see that this is an object of the type directory info. And we can ask for all kinds of stuff about what is in this directory, what's the path, and, and stuff like that. And we're not too concerned with that right now. So what we have now is we have this new automation that will, if I zoom out a little bit and scroll up to the top, it'll listen for a mouse click on the download recording element inside of my orchestrator. When it detects that I do that, it's going to listen for a new file to be downloaded into my downloads folder. When that file or a file finishes downloading inside that folder, it's going to take that file and extract it or unzip it into my failed jobs folder here on my desktop. And as we saw before, this folder was empty. So if we um, if we leave this open for just a second and we open the downloads folder as well, we can see that both these folders are empty. So what should happen now, if we're lucky, is that if I run this uh, automation, and we'll do that now, we'll minimize our studio. And we can see up here that now we have a new running job called Unpack Fault Screenshots. 
If I now go into my orchestrator and click the download recording button over here, if we're lucky and if we're quick, is we should see a new file being downloaded and then immediately after that, we should see that file being unzipped into the failed jobs folder. So let's try it out. I'll click, we'll minimize, and we can see already that the file is being downloaded here. And we'll just let that finish. And now it's downloaded, and if we're lucky, it'll start unzipping the files into my failed jobs folder. Okay, so a few minutes have passed, and I can reveal to you that nothing is happening, and I think I know why. So let's just uh, jump back into Studio. And we'll just stop the automation. And one thing I forgot to do is inside the file change trigger, it has a change type property up here. And that defines what kind of changes to a file is it listening for. And this is just for a change to a file. We want it to react to all changes to a file, including a file being created. So we'll just uh, go back and we will try and do this whole thing again. And what we'll see now, hopefully, is when we run it, and we go back into Orchestrator. We click the download link again. We minimize. And now we can see in the folder view that it's now downloading another file. And that's going to be called Screen Capture and then probably parenthesis 1. And we'll just wait for that to happen. And then once that is downloaded, hopefully uh, the file will unzip to the correct folder. But we'll just wait for that to happen. And what do you know? And if we open that folder, we can see all of these screenshots. And if we open a screenshot, we can see, and now I, I have two uh, screens on my setup here, but we can see that this is actually a screenshot from the failed job. So I'll close this again. I mentioned earlier the recording uh, feature in Orchestrator. If you want to record exceptions, there is an option inside of Orchestrator, and I'll just show you where it is. When you define a process in the process settings, there is this Enable Recording feature. I have a video on that, and I'll pop up a link to that on the screen now. You should go and watch that video, but before you do that, click the watermark down in the right-hand corner to subscribe to my channel. Also, hit the notification bell and keep watching my videos so I can keep making more of them. So stay safe out there. Take care. See you in the next one.